Hello, this is Annabelle and Sarah back again from Navigating the Shift. Welcome along. Um, today we're going to talk about an issue that affects many, many people in the world. No money. No money. What does uh. that feel like? Now, both of us have been through this in parts of our lives where it's felt completely desperate and um, with kids to feed and not much support. So what we want to do is have a quick look at the sort of the feelings that you get through, the symptoms, what sort of things happen, how does it affect you in your life, and then we'll give you some tools on how you can lift yourself out of those feelings. The reason that you do that is that what you put out reflects back in your world. So the more that you dr drag yourself down into that emotional pit uh, the harder it is to see the solutions that are being offered. Um, this is yeah. this is what I think each of us have found. So that's what we want to go into. Um, let's take a look at some of the, the symptoms, I'm going to call them at this stage, um, with regards to stress about no money. Do you want to have a look at some, Sarah? Yeah. Well, of course, the, I'll talk about some of the emotions. Of yeah. course, fear. It's scary. You know, what happens if I can't pay my rent? You know, I have kids to feed. I can't afford to do this. It's very frightening. And the other really deeper under that is shame, which is the lowest frequency emotion there is. And it leaves you feeling immobilized. It leaves you feeling like there's no way out. You, shame often comes with hopelessness. So all of those negative emotions get you, you spiral down into a place that becomes so stuck that instead of being able to take actions to improve your situation, you just end up to, I can't fix that, so I'm just going to hide it in the corner, whether it's physically putting something out of the room or compartmentalizing in your head. Uh, and so you push it away, push it away, which, of course, doesn't help things, but it's a tough place. The, it's really hard on your body. This, we all know this. We don't have to go into the description of it. And one of the things I really wanted to, to talk about is that it's such a huge part of the underlying or overlaying program that we're living under. You know, the, the what, do, what do they call it? The um, Babylonian money machine or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, the way the system has worked is designed to make people poorer and poorer. And then we, the system also shames people for being poor. Mm. So it's not I just sort of like, you know, that place where it becomes personalized. I'd like to say, you know what? A whole lot of people going through this as well. I mean, mostly people don't talk about it if they can avoid it. So you don't know that That's so it. many people have had this experience, which is one of the main reasons we want to talk about it is, that, yeah, been there. We know what it's like. That's it. And I think when, you, when you're a teenager and you've just come out of school and everybody's a student and everybody's poor and, and you know, you've got holes in your clothes and you're sharing a coffee in the cafe with a friend, um, like one coffee, then um, it's, it's expected and you can laugh about it. But when you get to a certain age, late 30s, 40s and, and 50s, and you are expected by society, you think – to have, have it all together, that you should have everything sorted by then. You should have at least one property. You should have this and that, a nice car and, and a good job. And, and yet uh, now there are so many people that are losing heart in the careers that they've had. This seems to be the vast majority of people that were coming to me for my coaching when I was running Kite Girl Coach, that they've been running in a certain direction for a certain amount of time. And it just it's like almost like the road stopped. It was still there, but not for them. They couldn't travel any further because their heart was not in it. They knew they meant to be doing something else, and they're lost. And if they, if they, or they lose their job because a lot of the middle management jobs are disappearing in this uh, completely out of balance society where the where the top elites get bigger, 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 take more and more money, and they automate so much of the middle management roles or or hand it to people but without paying them any more money. There's so many ways right. that they reduce their um, you got a friend behind you. Hello. Hello. <laughs> she says, photobomb. Yeah, photobomb puppy dog. <laughs> no, no, no. 
um, so they they reduce all that. So all the middle management lose their jobs, and all you're left with is is the plebs at the bottom, underpaid, overworked, given way more responsibility. You know, I mean, this is just a general society thing. So you end up with a huge amount of people that that were moving along just nicely and suddenly find themselves unemployed or um, struggling to get the most basic jobs. Um, and it's embarrassing. It's that nobody wants to talk about it. And I know when I had run out of money, I just I didn't want to talk to my family because it felt like I was pleading for help. I, and I had been brought up to believe I should be strong and independent and, um, and, the, and I didn't want to be rubbished by my family for being... You know, come on, Annabelle, you're completely competent. Why, why are you not working? Just go and get a bloody job. Yeah. And uh, these, so the, they're, like you're saying, the shame, the embarrassment, and then you isolate yourself. You don't want to talk to your friends and family about bad news, right? Have a look at social media. It's all about smiley faces. And here am I having a lovely dinner. And here am I out on the harbour. You don't, <laughs> you don't want anyone to know, here am I in the unemployment queue. Nobody wants yeah. to see that. Nobody wants to admit that. So feelings of hopelessness, then you beat yourself up, then you feel unworthy. So there's lots of symptoms there. But the now let's go into, you know, how, what does that affect? You started on that, Sarah, about your health as well. Oh, yeah. When you're in that deep level of fear and shame, phys- physically, your body, like, get stuck it stops moving and so you it's hard for you to move uh and i would say this is would be a, a really a, an interesting but really important thing to as a sort of a tool because if you look at it when you're getting ready to do something that's scary whether it's go for a job or whatever it is when this fear of the future comes up your body produces chemicals and all of this stuff, the adrenaline going. And it's almost like it's preparing you to take on a challenge. But if you don't actually do anything, if you don't go somewhere and do something and take that action, then it just recirculates back into your system. So, you know, you're you're isolated, you're hiding in your bedroom you're over and over, the thing is going around in your head of the, oh God, I've got to do this tomorrow. Oh God, I've got to do this tomorrow. <gasps> and if you go, I can't do it, I can't do it. And you don't take that action, you, you, it becomes like a buildup, a snowball effect within you. So whatever it is, take that energy and do something with it. Even if it's a small thing, even if it isn't the big thing, you know, oh, I'm so scared. I don't want to go out and... <gasps> Make do something, take that energy somewhere. And if you can't take that energy to uh, take steps toward changing your situation, say, do something else with it. Do something physical because the, the, uh, the, you need to keep things moving in order to get things moving. Mm, mm. And that can be such a, a challenge because all you really want to do is, is hide in the bedroom, like you said. Um, flight or flight is, is we've all heard about this a lot but it's just to quickly run back over it again the front half of your brain is your most sophisticated part and that is what gives you the subtlety of being able to pick up on your intuition and being able to pick up on an opportunity there's an opportunity there I could go and talk to that person right whereas um, when you're really really stressed about money or whatever, you know, if you're in an unsafe situation, then you move to the back here, the limbic system, I think it is, the very back at the base, which is the same part of the brain that mammals have as well. They have fight or flight as well. If you fall back into that position, that's your position of survival. And you don't have any sophisticated decisions. So you might make quite silly decisions along the way. You might make foolish decisions or you'll miss all the subtle opportunities that are being um, put laid out in front of you that the universe really, really wants to help you and you just don't see them. You just don't yes. see it. So um, by we got to find a way to release that. Um, deep breathing is a good start. Get some oxygen moving through there. Um, but yeah. I have a tool as well. Uh, the tool that I've got was given to me by Mercury Dan. You should really look them up on YouTube or um, there's loads of articles that I put on my blog. Uh, as well about Mercredan. Um, th- this is a very interesting exercise and it was about looking at emotions, that emotions are not you, right? They are something that you add on. So if you picture it as being a coat, and so I remember in this particular session when I was doing with him, I was just feeling so awful. I think it was at a time when I had 
very little money under a lot of stress. He said, okay, uh, just imagine that, that, that stress, that uh, fear, that low, low vibe basically is a coat. So put it on. I said, I don't want to. He said, just put it on. Put it on. All right. So this is where you're already wearing it. (laughs) It's a heavy one, a heavy coat. And he said, okay, just sit in that in the moment. Just picture it as it's the coat. It's not inside. It's the coat, right? I'm like, yeah, okay. Then he said, okay, now take it off and put it on a hanger and hang it on the rack. So I did that and then it just, it, it kind of, it just neutralized everything. It was amazing to do that. Wow. Really neutralized it. And I was like, oh, okay. He said, can you see where you are right now? I was like, yeah. And then he said, okay, let's, what's the opposite? I said, um, I can't actually remember the, what I said on the day, but let's say for example, joy, right? Joy. I hadn't felt joy for a long time. I like several, you know, months, I think, at that stage. He says, okay, there's the joy jacket coat. Put that coat on. So I put that coat on. He says, what does that feel like? I said, I can't feel anything. He says, no, use your imagination. Tune into that coat. Imagine the color of the coat, the texture of the coat. What's it made of? What is this? What is that? What what lightens you up? What It kind of warms you and it, it makes you feel more joyous. And I was like, oh, yeah, I feel a little bit of that. So because this is the first time, it's stretching you in directions you haven't been before. And then he said, okay, take it off. No, I don't want to take it off. No, take it off. Take it off. Put it on the rack. Put the other one back on. So the idea was to be able to switch between them. And he said what the ultimate goal is to be able to wear both coats so that you can feel the stress and you can feel the joy and they kind of neutralize each other and you – you lift yourself above all emotions. That's where we're heading. Up into the ascension area is where you lift yourself beyond being dragged from one area to the other. And you can you can sit above it. It's really a fascinating cool. I feeling. Like that. Yeah. So it reminds me of processes that were described um, in the book Initiation. A really interesting book. She's uh, a woman who's living in Europe during the World War, but mm. she's having experience of remembering her past life as a priestess in ancient Egypt and the training they went through. And they did a lot of work to get to that place where uh, you realize emotions aren't you and mm. they don't they aren't caused by this event. It's something that you create within you. And the way they did that was they would do practice of, okay, think about something that makes you feel very sad. And be, be with that feeling. Okay, now think about something that makes you feel joyous. And right. then, oh, feel that. And they would go back and forth and back and forth. And then they would say, okay, faster. Feel the, right. feel the shame, feel the joy. Feel the shame, feel the joy. Feel the shame, feel the joy. Feel them both. Yes. And then the, the further part of that was to not think about something that made you feel that way, but just to feel that way right. and realize the event isn't what made you feel that way. It's you who made you feel that way. And that it's not you. And that was how they got free from the emotional program. I just think it's a really uh, a re- highly recommended reading. Fantastic. It's one of the v- few books I still have, and I reread it every few years. It's very, very pleasant. That is brilliant. Yeah, yeah. So as we go forward, these, the, this program, this collective consciousness program is going away we're in the process of it so it's not going to go on forever um and one of the things uh we were talking about before annabelle was you know why do we put ourselves through this yeah yeah and the answer that came when she asked that question was oh so we can recognize the program as being the program and not me And it helps us to recognize other parts of the program as being the program and not me. Because we both had this experience of having somebody come in and just say, here, here's here's a bunch of money. You know, take care of yourself for a while to pay your rent for a few months and having it just feel the huge difference that makes. Just like, oh, I can think again. Exactly. I can breathe again. You know, I can sleep again. I feel like seeing my friends again, calling, yeah. talking to my children. Yeah. Um, it lifts you out of the mud. And 
also things start happening all of a sudden, you know, for me, I, you know, I won a contest, got a free astrology reading and other things just started just to shift and move. And for me uh, as well, same thing. I, I got handed that, that angel money, that angel piece of money. Uh -huh. I want to thank my angel so very much for that. It, was a, it made a <laughs> huge too. difference. And between, with, within two weeks, um, I had three different offers of, of work. Not, not, I don't tend to do full-time jobs anyway, but they were projects that would have made me money or there's some coaching here or a bit there. or uh, There were things coming in within two weeks. And then I started wondering... I. I don't know if they were missing before. I kind of wonder if they were always being there. They're always floated yeah. in front of you. Uh, and you just, you have your eyes closed. You've got your hand over your eyes and you cannot see those great opportunities that could solve the problems for you. You just need to lighten up and find that, that spot. So if that is just an emotion, that's what I was thinking of. The, uh, the, the program we were talking about is that... Uh, all the people around us talk about the program because all of us have been conditioned through our lives that, you know, to have the nice house and the picket fence and the nice, you know, the, I was going to say nice kitties, the, the nice car, um, <laughs> can't work. the kitties are, you know, what they are. But uh, that, that this is what is success. This is what uh, is people look up to and they will admire you if you do this. And yet it's just not the reality for, for many, many people now compared people. to last generation or the generation before it's just not not there so if we can all lighten up and be able to laugh about the fact that oh shit you know i've got no money at the moment or or uh, uh i need help right we talked about needing help before that uh if you can break that program that that makes a big difference it's a huge relief just to break the program you know yes mm -hmm. and if somebody does offer you help, receive it and don't feel like, oh, God, you know, I shouldn't take this money and I'll have to pay them back or I'll owe them forever. If you just go, oh, my God, thank you. This is just going to this has shifted so much for me. That's their that's their um, that's gift. their payback. Yeah, that's their gift in return. And you've been an angel. You know how it feels. It's like, oh, that money is not nearly as important as I do. seeing you yeah. change. That's it. I, yeah, I found that too. When you, can, when you can pay it forward, when you can give to somebody else, the gift is to be able to see that relief on their face and that, they, uh, that they, they've been lifted out of the poop, you know, out of the mud and can start seeing their own opportunities again. It is yes. so beautiful. Obviously, not everybody's going to be handing money as a true gift, uh, sometimes yes. they will do it in order to gain a friendship or gain something out of it. That, that you've got to make sure that you know for sure what's why they're doing that. I know it sounds very suspicious, but seriously, you've, you've got to, if, you, if it feels like a nice person and they really just want to give to you and it's fun to give, then great. Um, but, but just be slightly wary of the ones that want to give to you because they, they haven't bothered to discuss with you what they're looking for in return. And if you are in a situation where you can gift somebody either money or your time, your help, you know, if they if it, I encourage people to try to do that. I have said to people, you know what, you don't have any money and you really need some session time. Just I'll call, call me up tomorrow at this time on me, you know, and it feels good. It does. If we all did this for each other, when one person's in a good place that they gift to others, then we will we'll carry, you know, it'll be that upward spiral. We'll, it's we'll the power of forward, isn't out it? of it. Yeah, totally. Because there's so many people that sit there and they earn heaps of money or they have lots of status or whatever they've gained that and what society considers a success. And they feel empty inside because they don't give anything. They, don't, they only collect yeah. for themselves. So the minute you stop serving self and start looking at the broader range of people in front of you, just help one. You know, you don't feel like you're going to be inundated by a, a, a right. crowd, crowd that's going to rip you to shreds because they want a bit of you. Just help one person. And it feels so good. It's, it's very easy to do. I think that this is a very good topic to do more on. We, uh, I think we will, we will cover this again. No money is a, is a good one to cover. And if you've got any questions, put them below. Um, otherwise, I think we'll probably add more tools to this uh, to yeah. help people through that. Okay. So like it, share it if, uh, if you're, you're enjoying it. 
spread the word for us. We really want to help as many people as we can. Right. Bye. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Bye.